the difference in what I will be presenting to you is, is we will get to the nuts and bolts of evangelism. What do you do when you're sitting across the table from somebody? What do you say to them? How do you answer the questions that they have? We're going to get to that. But we're going to start off with changing our mindset because that needs to happen first. And I had the privilege and opportunity to preach to you last week in the morning. And if you notice, that sermon title was From Indoctrinated to Conversion. It was the idea of being fully converted and having us move beyond uh, just knowing the church lingo to actually being converted into the image of Christ. Okay, And that's how this class is going to start off. And so I kind of tag this that we want to uh, be more about being the image of Christ than doing the works. Because if, if our being changes, the works happen automatically. Okay? Because I am married to Anita Johnson, there are some things that automatically happen due to that, that marriage. Okay, And so we're going to talk about being versus doing. All right, We're not about statistics. We're about souls. Is that all right? Okay. And so... One thing we always want to understand, like you see on the screen here, is that evangelism is simply not what we do, all right? It's not just about what we do, it's about who we are, okay? And when we think about Jesus and who he was, was he about saving lives, saving souls? Absolutely. That was in his being. It wasn't just a matter of the work that he did, it was a matter of who he was, and there's some ways for us to move into that type of mindset for us to uh, consider that, okay? Now, uh, Mary's Bureau is, is my website. I'm not trying to sell you anything. There's nothing on there to buy. But that is where you can go. And when you get to the menu of marysbureau.com, uh, choose Bible study, all right? That'd be one of your options. And underneath Bible study, you're going to see Evangelism 2023. Just click on Evangelism 2023, and there you'll see the digital book that I'll be referring to often. And I hope to, I'm recording this morning's class, so if any of you are in the Witness Protection Program, don't get in front of the camera. Because this is, I hope for this to go out to the world. Let me tell you something else about my mindset too. I, I'm in a season in my life where I am not just thinking about the local congregation. I'm thinking about the body as a whole, right? And so that's also why I'm recording this. I want to be a benefit not just to Schrader Lane. I want to be a benefit to the body of Christ wherever it might be. And to me, recording these lessons and having them available for others to see and to learn from and be encouraged from. Uh, because on my website, I, my main goal is to inspire excellence in everything that we do. And so I want to inspire others to, to be, instead of just do, evangelism as well. So I'm recording this uh, in that effort. And so you will also have the opportunity that if you miss a class or I didn't quite catch what Brother Johnson said or what Brother Gordon said because he's going to help me out with this and, and, and I, we might pull on Brother Thomas from time to time as well and, and you guys, you'll have the opportunity to go back and to review uh, those things alright, and I'm, I'm encouraged by the number of people that I see taking notes and, and those, those kinds of things inspire me and so I appreciate you all for, uh, for doing that alright, we can take the book the book, if you choose, if you go to Bible study, underneath Bible study is Evangelism 2023. If you clicked on that or press on that on your phones, Evangelism 2023, and you'll see, uh, it'll say the reality of evangelism PDF book. There'll be a button like that. You click on that button and then you'll get the digital book. Now that digital book is gonna be live. 
Because as I learn from you, and you learn from me, I'm going to be adding to that book as this class goes on. All right? And we'll have a finished product by the end of the year uh, for that book. And I'm hoping that that book can then be used by others or us as well as we continue to move on and being uh, more evangelistic. Okay? All right, let me, you know what? Let me let me try this. Uh, you, you know, when you try to do uh, technology, sometimes it'll bite you, right? All right, so that's what my uh, home page looks like, all right? And then you'll notice it says Bible classes next to sermons. You click on that. You see Ecclesiastes. That's what I'm doing on Wednesday nights here at Schrader Lane on the Zoom call. And underneath that is Evangelism 2023. I'm going to click on that, click on it again, and this is what you'll see, all right? Shows that we're doing at Schrader Lane starting September 3rd. You scroll down, and then right there, you'll see it says, The Reality of Evangelism, Being Versus Doing Student PDF Book. You click on that, his expertise, all right? This is an image I created from artificial intelligence. I just told it what I wanted and it, it came back with this image of people talking about Christ around the table, okay? And then there's the title, Barry's Bureau, The Reality of Evangelism, Being Versus Doing. Evangelism is simply not what we do, it is who we are. And then you'll move right into the, into the book itself. I'll talk a little bit about myself and my retirement. <coughs> Proverbs 14 and 12, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. This is my favorite verse in the Bible. That's why I put that in there. And I believe this helps us with evangelism because we run into a lot of people who believe what they're doing is right. Amen? Amen. But there's a way that seems right to a man, <clears throat> but the end thereof is death. So I think this is a sober reminder to mankind that they're not they don't need to pursue their own view of what right is, or the Bible would say their own righteousness. They need to pursue Christ's righteousness, right? Because that's what we want God to see. When he looks at us, we don't want him to see our works. Because how do they come before God, according to the Bible? That's filthy rags, right? What we want God, the Father, to see in us is we want him to see Jesus, right? So we want to be covered by his righteousness, not by our own. And then in the table of contents, you'll see in that book, if you download it and save it, and, and, and you heard these terms before, when we talk about evangelism over these next several weeks, we're gonna do it with these W's. The, the who of evangelism, the what of evangelism, the when, the where, the why, and then the how, which is where we'll be spending most of our time the how of evangelism, and then there'll be a little bit of a conclusion, and just to show you guys, you know, what the book looks like, there's an introduction, and then you'll get to the first chapter right there, okay? And we'll, we'll, we'll deal more with that too later if you like. Um, let's get back to our regular scheduled broadcast, okay? <laughs> All right, so let me go. To that just to introduce the class again we're gonna start off and uh, hopefully get to it today as well as we connect with each other because that's what we want to do uh, we're gonna talk about the who now what is the who in evangelism the who is us first of all right we need to understand who we are so we can understand what we need to be about right and then it's a matter of who is them we need to understand our audience. Uh, I brought up in one of the times I stood before you, I've, I've done, started doing some research. I've, I've looked at the zip code of where the Schrader Lane church body assembles, right? There's a common critique against Christianity, and it is Christianity does not affect the communities that it's in. If you see these churches and you see the neighborhoods that they're in, and they don't they don't have any effect on them. The communities are poor, 
uh, people were downtrodden and, and the like, but you still had the, the preachers, and I'm talking denominations mainly, still standing up asking for money, right? Yeah. But they don't affect the change in the community. We don't want to be known that way. We want to be known as what the Bible would describe a light set up on a what? Yeah. Yeah. On a hill, yeah. right? And what, what happens when you have a light that is set up on a hill? What does it do? It gives light to all the areas. It gives light to all the areas. What is it, brother? You see from a distance. That's right. And it attracts. That's right. Right? Yeah. When, when people are in darkness and they see light, what do you do? You, you go to the light. You go to the light. So we want to be known. We want, to, we want our community to know us because we are a light that is set up on a hill. And there are things that we can do to become light in darkness. Now, brothers, I want you to know something. You don't become light in darkness by going to church. Amen? Amen. You don't become light in darkness by studying your Bible. Just speaking the truth, right? You don't become light in darkness by going to Bible class, right? You, you, you have to be light. You have to be light. And we need to know what that is so that we can be it. Why? So that that light will attract lost souls in the darkness. But it, now, you guys know this area better than me. Is our community in darkness? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We can affect that. We can affect that. Christ wants us to affect that right? And, and he wants us to illuminate uh, his light in us to the world, first starting with our community. That's what I was talking about when I talked about, if you notice, even in, in the Bible, on the day of Pentecost, and before they went there, Jesus told his disciples that they were going to be his witnesses first where? In Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. Guess what that is? Their community. Right? Right? And then after Jerusalem, they were going to be witnesses to Judea. Judea. Now, if you notice, you had Jerusalem. That's a small area. And then they were going to be witnesses to Judea. They were expanding the area, right? But we don't get to, we don't, we shouldn't be thinking about Judea till we have first been witnesses to our Jerusalem. Till we've been witnesses to our community. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And once we've done that, we would have gained some lessons, some experience, and some confidence that will then allow us to go out to Judea. And hopefully before we go out to Judea, we have also gained some more disciples and some more uh, saints that are willing to witness, right? And then when we go out to Judea, we just repeat the same thing again. We gain more witnesses, and that allows us to go into the uttermost parts of the world. And, and, and saints, we know we have that ability to do it. I am so encouraged by the reports that I see from Brother Etheridge and Thomas and McCleskey and going to Africa and setting up a school and doing all those kinds of things. But brothers, you know what? Christianity is in such a position now that, uh, and Brother McCleskey reported this, and I've been trying to research it to give you the facts but supposedly, there are more Church of Christ members in India than there are in the United States. Now, I'm not going to say that that shouldn't be because I'm glad that that's what the case is, right? But we, we can certainly affect or we can com compete with those numbers, I think, all right? And the church in Africa is growing, right? Everybody else seems to be welcoming this word of truth. Where our our Judea seems to be um, rejecting it, right? But oftentimes, I think what they're rejecting is not actually what the Bible says. They're actually rejecting a caricature or an opinion of what the Bible says. Because one of the things we're going to talk about is we're going to have to learn how to move from Bible discussions. To Bible studies. That's where you change people. Because the power to change does not reside in us. And we have some very capable orators in the 
even in this room, Brother Buchanan, Brother Darden Hire, and others. But the power for change, the power of the gospel is in the gospel. So until we get people confronted by the gospel, then any change that does affect them, they might be changed by my good friendship with them and good relationships, and those things are gonna be important, and we're gonna see that. But ultimately, to, to have them move from being lost to saved, the Bible's got to come in there somewhere. The Bible's got to come in there somewhere. So we're going to have to learn to gain the courage and understand the purpose of moving from Bible discussions to actual Bible studies. And that's how it was done in the old days, right? Right? It was the Bible that converted you, amen? That might have been some good person that, that uh, brought that Bible to you. They exemplified those words of scripture and the like, but it was actually the scriptures that converted you and changed you. And so we have to be willing to do that with people too. So when I talk to somebody and they tell me they don't know nothing about the Bible, I know I'm on fertile soil. <laughs> they, they don't know what, they have no idea what's coming, right? They think they know what's coming, but once again, I believe most of the world's impressions of the Bible are other people's opinions and what they thought they heard, right? And so we're going to present them to what the truth is. So we're gonna start off with that first, the who of being, and that is us, and that is them. And then we'll move into what? Then we'll start talking about evangelism and what evangelism really is so that we understand what it is. And I believe most of you all have probably a really good understanding of it, but I hope to bring us to a, 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 a different depth level of understanding of evangelism, okay? So that it, that it touches our souls, all right? That it touches our hearts, okay? And then, after we define evangelism in the what portion, we're gonna talk about when. And that's recognizing our opportunities, okay? Even Jesus told his disciples when they go to certain places, when they leave to, to do what? Wipe the dust off their feet, right. right? Every individual is not an opportunity. Now, I believe personally that every individual has an opportunity, but it may not be when you confront them. <laughs> it may not be when you come across them. All right, because God still might be working with them, right? God still might be working with them, and so the time and God works in time, doesn't He? Yes, yes. yes. And, and I got good news for you: God is patient, and not only patient, He is long suffering. That's good news for us and them, <laughs> right? And so we're gonna learn how to work in God's timing, right? And we're going to understand when we have opportunities to evangelize. And, and so what's happening so much with the church today, when they're presented with opportunities, they're not ready for them. They're not ready for them. They're not ready to take advantage of those opportunities. And not only will we learn to recognize those opportunities, we are also going to learn how to create opportunities. Okay? Because there's there's, there's a, 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 a manner in which we can create the opportunity to present the gospel, to move from mere Bible discussions into actual Bible studies, right? Would that be good if we could do that? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, then we're going to talk about where, right? And that's where we're going to concentrate on those efforts that come from those opportunities, all right? And, and, and the where is going to show us how to deal with the opportunities that we have in, in specific ways, right? And when we're in certain situations, they say, ah, this is an evangelistic opportunity, right? And then we'll take advantage of them. And then we'll move into why, right? Brothers, if, if you don't 
love the souls of men, I don't know how successful you're gonna be at this. This is, this is not a job that we're trying to fulfill. We're not punching a clock. Uh, the people who are most successful at their work are the people that have a passion for it. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. People that have a passion for it. I, I went to Proviso East High School. How many of you have ever heard of Doc Rivers? Lynn Rivers? Oh, yeah. Coach of the... So I played basketball with him, all right? And we, we grew up around the same time. We were at Proviso East and down the road in Westchester. They don't know, where's Brother Moore? If you hear today, Westchester, St. Joseph High School, uh, their famous player was Isaiah Thomas, right? And so it was a state battle every year to see who was going down state because we were in the same region, right? Now on our team was a gentleman by the name of Ricky Wilson, and he just passed. So I heard that in the Ricky Wilson was probably twice as talented as Glenn Rivers. And we all know how good Doc was. And, and he's turned out to be a pretty good coach as well, right? But there was a guy on that on our team that was better than Doc was. Do you know what the difference was? Doc had a passion for it. He worked at it. He practiced. Ricky was all about the girls <laughs> and the reputation of playing basketball at Proviso East High School, right? And so he never developed his talent beyond just being able to, because he didn't even play college basketball, right? So the people who have a passion for it, that's, this is the why that we're gonna, I'm gonna work really hard to try to instill with us. Number one, to try to help us to know whether or not we have a passion for the souls of men. And number two, how can we light a fire underneath that to, to bring that out? Because you know what? Jesus had a passion for you. Amen. How do we know? Is, is there any greater love than that? No. Are, are, are we willing to do that for our community? What, what are we willing to give up? What are we willing to give up to actually affect our Jerusalem because I don't I, 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 if we're not willing to, to to deal with some kind of sacrifice and I'm not saying you know I'm not asking you to lay out on the cross <laughs> but if we're not willing to deal with some kind of, to get you out of your comfort zone in some kind of way I'm retired now and I'm, I'm enjoying a life to where I get to golf a couple times a week boy do you should see my heart leap when Brother Gardenhire sends me a text. Are you available? Am I available? <laughs> right? I wonder, you know, I know, I'm getting to know Brother Gardenhire pretty good, but I know if that became an opportunity for a Bible study or golfing with Barry, he's probably going to choose that Bible study because of his passion. And, and, and I need to be that same way as well. I believe I am. I, I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice some of the niceties that have been afforded me now to the unknown of dealing with some crazy person across the table. But if we're talking about the Bible, I got a passion for that. I have a passion for that. And I'm willing to share that passion and that knowledge that has come from 30 plus years of preaching and teaching and, and evangelism and the like. I'm willing to share that with others. Why? Because their souls are important. We also need to understand something in the why that I'm going to bring up when we get there is the power of multiplication. When 9-11 happened and I was at Brookfield, we didn't have to do anything, but I, my heart was moved to just open up the building and allow anybody that would come in who wanted to pray. And they didn't have to be a member of the Church of Christ that meets in Brookfield. And lo and behold, this, this middle-aged woman comes in, she's crying, and she is worried about her country, and you know, because the planes just flew into towers, and oh my God, the world's coming to an end, right? 
We all felt that way, right? What What is happening? Right. So I opened up the building, let people come in, and from her coming in and talking to me, she showed up to the Sunday service a couple days later. That visit led to Bible study. That Bible study led to baptism. That baptism led to her daughter getting baptized, her other daughter getting baptized. That first daughter that got baptized got her boyfriend baptized. His brother, her boyfriend's brother, got baptized. Those two brothers were contractors. They redid our whole auditorium. Walls, lights, carpet, everything. Right? That, that led to the, the first daughter's boyfriend had an ex-girlfriend <laughs> who got baptized. Okay? I'm talking about the power of multiplication here, right? And recognizing opportunities and being prepared for when they present themselves. Now, the first daughter's boyfriend, I'm telling you, this multiplied. The first daughter's boyfriend was the son of a notorious gangster in Cicero, Illinois. How many of y'all have heard of Cicero, Illinois? Been there. Been there, huh? <laughs> Crooked. <laughs> All right. Now this 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 gentleman had kind of retired from the gangster life, but he passed away. Guess who they asked to do his service? You. Do y'all think I preached the gospel? Now, I can't tell you if any baptisms came from that, but where evangelism is concerned, that's not our first priority. You know what our first priority is? <coughs> Sowing the seed. That's what our priority is. And I know that what I preached had an effect because everybody that got up to speak after me said something about what I said. They either want to refute it one, one of the sons got up and said, well, I'm not sure what Mr. Johnson was saying about it. I like what he said and everything, but I, you know, my father was a good man, and I, and I believe that, and, da, 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 da. and I didn't refute any of that stuff there. I just pointed out what was necessary to go to heaven. And I, and I pointed out to them, what do you think your father would be telling you today if he could from the grave? Would he be telling you to follow him? Or would he be telling you to follow Christ? I know that hit him right in the heart. Right? And that, that, it, that was a big funeral. Right? And, and, and that led to me preaching another funeral in a Baptist church. Once again, preached the gospel. That led to a couple visits. I don't think that Baptist preacher is speaking to me anymore, but... <laughs> <laughs> When we get the opportunity, we got to be faithful. Amen? Amen? And we'll talk about that in the why, because that's where we're going to be expressing God's love. That's why we're evangelizing. We're evangelizing to express God's love. We're evangelizing to sow the seed. And then we'll get to the how. That'll be the nuts and bolts. I'll try to make sure Brother Gordon and I and Brother Thomas, we set along enough side to answer your specific questions about sitting down across the table from people. What do I say? Where do I start? How do I do all of this? And, and I'm going to tell you up front, all that is going to be predicated on the, the them, the person sitting across the table. I Because I, I don't want us to have a rote script for what to say when we're sitting across from people. I want us to be a, a, in a position to meet people where they're at. Meet them where they're at and walk alongside of them, okay? Um, that's, that's the Greek word for counseling. Uh, the actual Greek word is escaping me, but it means to walk alongside with them. It's, it's the kind of counseling I was telling you that I was <coughs> trained to, to learn how to do. Uh, boy, don't get old. <laughs> <laughs> You forget stuff, right? Yeah. All right, so then we'll deal with the That's right. how, how to connect with people because you never share information 
with people until you connect with them first, right? You connect with them first. Once you've connected, then it's time to open that book. Then it's time to share the information that you have. And we're gonna, we'll, we'll be talking about that uh, as well, okay? Now, Brother Thomas, you let, you let me know how we're doing on time. Okay. All right. Do I have any questions so far? Yeah. Define, define connecting with people. How do you? We know what that means, but I like to hear from you. I, I think connecting with people means you have developed some level of relationship. Okay. If you have developed some level of relationship with that person, then you have connected with them. That usually takes days, doesn't it? Absolutely. Or days and we gotta be maybe in the weeks. We got to have the characteristic that the Holy Spirit was supposedly given us as part of the fruit. Patience and long suffering, right? This is not, you know, um, I think it's Dave, I got this from Dave Ramsey, but you know, I'm not selling microwaves here. I'm selling crock pots. <laughs> this is about time. And, and, and that's a good thing because uh, if you study your Bible, everything God did was time. How long did Noah preach? 120 years. Wow. How many of y'all would have given up in 120 years? Lord, they're not getting it. <laughs> Go ahead and bring down the rain. <laughs> Let me get in this boat. I'm tired of talking to these people. Okay? 120 years. Everything God did, right? I mean, he allowed the children of Israel to be in captivity for years and years, right? I know when they went in Babylon, or yeah, Babylon, they were there for 70 years, right? Right. Before they were delivered, they, they basically delivered into another world power, the Medes and the Persians, right? And from the Medes and the Persians to the Greeks, from the Greeks to the to Rome, <laughs> right? God works in time, so we need how to, we need to be able to work in time as well, you know, but we, and just sow the seed. That's our responsibility. If we get that into our spirit, or our task, it's not about baptizing, it's about sowing the seed. Or well, we'll see the power of sowing seed. We really will. Because God gives the increase. And, and we want him to do it. On this home page, if you scroll down, it says subscribe to Barry's Bureau. Several members here have already done that. So every time I do something, I send out an email. Because I think you heard me, you've heard me say it before. Um, church growth is not about numbers. It's not numeric. It's spiritual, right? So I, my, my number one priority is not to grow the church numerically. My number one priority is to grow the church spiritually, right? And so from a physical, carnal standpoint, the things that you see, hear, and write allow you to retain it better. It allows you to learn it better. So I become a big proponent of having an outline when I preach so that those that want to can do it, present sermons that allow people to take notes, right? Keep it simple. You know, those are all, all goals that I have to help grow the church spiritually. And you know when you do it, because people come and tell you. Don't they, Brother Gar and I? They, they will come and tell you yeah, go ahead, Brother Turner. I, I just wanted to say how much I appreciate what you just said yes. about growing the church spiritually because I think sometimes when we think about evangelism, people really do get caught up in the numbers. That's right. And you can you can baptize a lot of people this month and may not even be here next <laughs> month or even next week. That's right. So it's about the spirituality, I, I think, that is really at the uh, center of it. Thank you for that, Brother Turner, because we are going to deal with that in the class, too, because... Our, our evangelism is not going to stop with just getting them in the doors. It's going to be uh, teaching them again the things that I've taught you. So we're, we're not going to see our evangelism completed until they've been through a new converts class and we've checked on them to see how they're transforming from their carnal lives to their new spiritual lives, okay? That's, that's all a part of evangelism. Okay? We're not just going to baptize them and move on to the next thing. Because a lot of people feel that way. 
You know, a lot of people feel like, oh, you, you just wanted me in the door. Y'all just wanted my money. Y'all just wanted my whatever. So we're going to keep it that way. So if you want anything that I put out, and I'm going to put, I, I, every week I'll be putting something out for this class, just like I do for evangelism. Go to Barry, can you show?